welcome back to Beat the Count. I'm Chris, your boxing enthusiast. We're live here from Sweet Science Boxing and MMA in Hawthorne, California. I have with me my partner in crime, Anthony Stack Saldana of Supreme Boxing. Welcome. What's going on, guys? What's going on? And we got a couple of champions. The champ is here. <laughs> you know what's going on? I got a couple of them in the house. WBA Super Bantamweight Champion Danny Roman making his second appearance, actually, on Beat the Count. Welcome back. Oh, thank you. I'm cool. happy to be back. Oh, I'm glad to have you back. And to my far left, of course, we have two division world champion Jesse Vargas. What's going What's on? Up, thank man? you for having me. First oh, of all, yeah, thank you for having me. You. It's a pleasure being here with you fellas, and um, especially next to Daniel Roman, of course, wh which uh, we will be fighting on the same night. Yeah, that's right. So you guys on April 26th, right? The April 26th at the Forum in Inglewood, right here in Los Angeles. Yes. We'll be fighting the same night, but not against each other. Not against each other. Yeah. That clear, There's yeah. a little <laughs> bit of a little bit of a size difference. A little bit of a size difference yeah, yeah. between you guys. But uh, he's in a good fight. I'm looking forward to it, and I'm looking forward to my fight as well. It's going to be a good night of boxing. So everybody, tune in April 26th on the zone. On the zone. That's right. So this is your debut at 154. It is. Yeah. Okay. Against uh, Umberto Soto. Against Umberto Soto. It's actually a uh, catchweight, 151, but okay. it's, it's already considered at 154 division. And um, I'll be going up to 154 in the next fight. You know, this is God willing, everything was his plan, which that's what I'm preparing for. And 154 will be my division to conquer next. All right. So 154 is the target for you. And for you, Danny, the target is a unification bout. Yes, sir. 122 uh, against TJ Duhini, the IBF champion. So the winner walks away with half of the belts, right? Two? Both. Yeah, yes. you walk away with two. <laughs> two out of four. Not bad, right? Not bad. That's right. So I have a question for you guys. What's a, a bigger status point, the two divisions or the two uh, belts in the same division? No, I'm just messing with you. I'm not gonna <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's uh, every fighter's <laughs> no, dream to become a unified world champion, and I give credit to Daniel Roman for sure. taking on the challenge, and you know, I look forward to seeing him, seeing him victorious. Sure, but two going on three isn't bad either. Yeah, of course. Of I mean, course. we both have our own success going. Yeah, you guys both have got your things going on, but very excited. So Dylan Keene popped on. What's up, Dylan? He said he's already got his tickets. Super hyped. We're super hyped as well fighting at the forum so danny this is your first fight in la which is your hometown yes right are you excited to fight at the forum oh i'm really happy uh you know i i grew up in the city of uh inglewood uh i went through the forum uh, all the time passed by i, I never thought i was actually gonna uh, fight at the forum because they actually took a uh, boxing for a few years so hey man what more can i ask for my own backyard and uh not just any fight a unification bout so all your friends and family hitting you up for tickets already, or was that? Do we go to you, Eddie? Is that <laughs> what we do? <laughs> yeah, you guys are getting a lot of ticket requests, huh? Yes, yes. The benefits of fighting in your hometown. Cool. That means that we're gonna have a, a packed night. You know, um, we already have a few people that already said that they purchased the tickets, and we still have three <laughs> weeks away. So yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Exactly. Oh, it's it's gonna be a solid night, man. It's gonna be one of those nights from like the '80s, from the old form, man. The Zaragoza nights, you know that type of night you're gonna have so wrong in the main event going up against guy Estrada in the rematch you know possibly you know was a candidate of a, a fight of the year you got danny roman that's unifying the titles not a lot of champions take that step man to try to unify the title titles there's a few that actually do but to to have the balls man to get in there and, and not just cherry pick you know as that word goes around in the boxing community to cherry pick somebody and just have some type of defense to come to la to have his first fight in L.A. in front of his hometown and to be in such a dangerous fight, but with so much reward, man, I, I, I congratulate you, Danny. And for, for Jesse, man, to be moving up to 54 with the hopes of, you know, because we've talked about this in uh, a little bit before, with the hopes of taking on Jaime Mugrina at the end of the year and trying to become a three-division world champion, this is big. This is super big. So if you're in L.A. and you guys haven't got your tickets yet, you need to get your tickets to this show because it's great. It's a stack card up and down. You got Ronnie Rios on the card. You got Isaac Zarate, who's another Southern California boy on that card. Diego Pacheco just turned 18 years old, making his U.S. debut. He's from South Central L.A. So it's it's a stack card from top to bottom. So you guys need to come out to this show. Let me ask Jesse about that. So Anthony kind of threw out there that there's ambitions for obviously 154 pounds. You said conquering uh, that division. That'll be your weight class going forward. Do you have your eye on Munguia? Is that, is that what you're looking for? Or that's I'm obviously that's not looking past Soto. but Of yeah. course, of course. We're preparing for Soto. I know he's a very experienced veteran, but I look forward to the victory. And once I do come out victorious, then I'm, I'm basically targeting anyone that has as a belt in the 154-pound division. And Jaime Munguia is a fight that is doable. You know, oh. we are f both fighting on the zone. Yeah. And then again, we can also pursue uh, the WBC championship. Uh, I mean, Hurt is fighting soon. 
um, we'll, we'll check him out and see how he fights and um, we'll see what are the possibilities of fighting him as well I mean I'm open to fighting anyone I like her you know he's, he's a we get along well but in the business we understand that we have sure. to fight each other if we have to and if we must we will but I respect to each and every one of them but we, we are here to entertain the fans and if that means fighting our friends fighting uh, whoever is is on the list and we must yeah and I, I notice I will point out that I recently saw a photograph of you next to Jaime Munguia and I will say that you you seem well suited for this weight division like you have the appropriate height the appropriate shoulder structure um, so you don't think it'll be I mean 154 doesn't seem like it'll be a challenge in terms of make the weight and not at anything all like that not at all I actually feel better I'm performing much better I'm performing stronger faster more explosive yeah. in this weight division which is uh, understanding understandable because I mean, I was, it's understanding because I was struggling a lot at 147 pounds okay. to, to make the weight. And now going up to 154, I feel the difference. I see how much it was affecting me to make 147. So I won't be going back down anymore. That's for sure. 154 and I will become world champion there very soon. And at 54, not just going up to 54 for this fight, being your first fight at 54, actually 51. But this is actually your first fight with the Hall of Famer Freddie Roach, man. How's, tell us a little bit about that training and how training is going with Freddie. Well, it's been a great learning experience training with, with Freddie Roach. I would have to admit that this has been my best training camp until this day. You know, um, I'm really enjoying it. I'm really um, trying to consume as much knowledge as uh, Freddie passes on to me because it's not so much the technique. Yeah, of course, it's, it has a lot to do with the technique, but it also has to do with the fighter knowing how to maintain ring generalship, which means maintaining your composure, maintaining um, the maintaining the momentum, ma mo maintaining the the um you would have to say the being the commander inside the and, and chief inside the ring you know what i mean yeah which is dictating the pace uh having your opponent do what you want at times to prepare different types of shots so he's kind of opening my eyes to a whole different world which before i was just in just to give the fans a fight and i'm still in it for that but it was just about throwing punches and tons of it you know it's you know, even if I left tired in the 12th round, I said, I have to continue throwing punches. Now it's more like setting up different punches, um, setting up traps for my opponent, which is uh, I'm quite fond of it because it has me entertained during the fight. Yeah, that's interesting because something that's come up on this show a number of times is can you teach, for lack of a better term, an old dog new trick? So you gentlemen have been boxing for a very long time, right? So you're yes. young men, right? But you've been boxing for a very long time. You're very experienced. Uh, in that way and so there's some thought about which is you know can we how much can you change a boxer or when a fighter change trainers how much can you actually bring to it but what I'm hearing is there's elements of strategy and psychology and things outside of just skills and everything like that that you exactly. can that you can pick up from yeah other I coaches. mean you know what in this fight game we don't stop learning we continue to consume more knowledge we continue to increase our game plans and um, I think that that's what continues Continu will continue to bring you to another level it is never come in with the same arsenal always have something new added onto it and that's exactly what we have to do in order for us to give to give the best of ourselves the best uh performance possible got gotcha. you and in terms of training speaking of training i actually very recently on saw a training video of several <laughs> training videos matchroom boxing has been posting on on instagram a lot of training videos of danny roman including a 5 a.m. morning run. That was earlier this week, right? Yes, it was. It was. Uh, they, were rec they started recording me on Wednesday, and the running I did, did it on <laughs> Thursday morning, okay. 5 in the morning. Were they just following you around for two days with the cameras? Or Yes. yes yeah, they yeah. Were following <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so we talked a little bit about this, but uh, is it is it uh, somewhat distracting for training camp? It is. It is distracting, and uh, it's tiring at the same time. Tiring? Because you got people following you every day, and, and like uh, – I mean, you, you can't rest that much because you got to be a certain place at a certain time and you, you try to put everything together so you don't get to rest enough. So how's that work, guys? You're running and they're just driving alongside you with the camera? Is that yeah, <laughs> that's, that's pretty much how it works, right? I mean, yeah. Jesse, you, you've, been in, you've been in the big fights. I mean, you've, you've fought everybody and anybody, man, from Manny Pacquiao to Timothy Bradley. You know, I mean, Jose you Cito Lopez. Jose Cito Lopez yeah. early in your career, you beat Vivian Harris. So you've you've had the, the the cameras on you. You've had that exposure from from HBO, from pay per views, from different types of major promotional companies. You know what would you what would you suggest to Danny now that he's finally getting he's getting the limelight on him. He's becoming a, a superstar of his own. 
what what do you suggest as a fighter to to somebody like him that's finally developing him and coming up in to his own and the entertainment side of the the sport you know he's he's on the right path he's doing everything he has to do in order to continue to progress he's you know, he's uh he's coming into a unification fight which i give him a lot of credit for you know i see him with high possibilities of becoming a mega superstar he just has to continue doing what he's doing working hard staying disciplined make sure to condition properly and to continue to uh, to elevate his game and that will come with experience with each and every fight he's going to be better and better and i believe that he's he's one of the most fan friendly fighters out there and he's a superstar to come i mean everybody will see him i mean he's he's becoming a superstar now but he's growing even more and expanding I think this is a an interesting point for both of you. Maybe maybe both of you can comment on it. But in the media, you'll hear people a lot talk about the moment, right? And what they'll say is, "Oh, this may this moment may be too big for a fighter." I don't know if you guys have ever heard someone refer to it in that way, but uh, oh, this is a step up, and the moment may be too big. The lights may be too much. There's too big a crowd. Um, as people who are uh, in your case, Danny, now experiencing that and coming into the moment, being the show right mm -hmm. and jesse having been there a number of times as a fighter is that legitimate do you actually feel that or do we just make that up you know is that something that doesn't really take place it depends on each and every fighter i mean there's a lot of fighters that they don't show up as soon as the the major lights turn on you know because when, when you're on your big stage things change you know you have uh people screaming and and it's it's actually it, the crowd's going wild from the beginning you're walking out and some fighters get shocked by it and they don't perform as well you know, I don't see as either of us being that way. Yeah. You know, I see Roman shining as soon as that bell rings, and I see myself the same way. It's just about um, being prepared mentally, mentally, physically, and spiritually, and, um, you know, give thanks to God to, for being in that position. And now you worked all this time to be in that certain position. Now it's just about you uh, performing. Do you feel that difference when you're in the ring, Danny? You know what? Uh, I, don't, I don't really feel it, you know, because... Yeah. Mentally, yeah, we get ready for that, like uh, Jesse said, uh, like we said, uh, mentally, spiritually, and physically, you get ready for, for that moment. So you know that moment's coming, and you know you got to perform. That's your time. That's your time to shine, and that's, that's exactly. how I see it. Exactly. I mean, he's right. I mean, you've waited so long to be in that position, you know, because we, we hoped, we dreamed of it. We, first, we, we, we saw each other in that position at some point, you know, when we were younger. And then once you're there, it's okay, it's here, let's yeah. perform. You know, Danny, you've been on the road a lot, man. Um, we've had this discussion numerous of times. You know, it started back with, um, you know, in Atlantic City against Adam Lopez, yes. you know. And then going on the road, going into Japan, you know, fighting Kubo over in Japan, then defending your title in Japan, then going into Chicago and fighting, you know, Gavin McDonald. You've had that pressure of, of being on the road and, and being the underdog, you know, numerous times. Now coming home and, and this type of fight, is is the pressure different because you're in front of a, now you're actually back in front of your home crowd instead of being on the road? Is, is there different pressure? Mm, no, no, I don't, I don't feel the different pressure. You know, for me, it's a, a fight's a fight. You know, I'm going to get my best performance, go out there and, and do my thing, you know, because that's what I'm getting for, you know, I'm re getting ready for to give my best performance and give the people what they want to see and give the best of me and uh, escalate even more. Danny, first of all, I will say that uh, we talked a little bit about your last fight, and that was a master class performance. It was, a, it was an excellent performance. I thought, if you guys watched it, you remember that fight? Yeah. It was a, a surgical, in, is the word that I would use to describe it, right? And actually, when you started that fight, the DAZN commentators and everybody, they started by saying, Danny Roman has a PhD in fighting taller fighters. That was the comment that they made, right? Um, where does that knowledge or strategy come from? Oh, <laughs> what do you do? What's, it, what's, it like, what's the main thing? And for me, because I'm a small guy, right? We're about the same size, mm -hmm. give or take. What's the, what's the key? What, what's the takeaway for fighting tall dudes? I mean, uh, it depends how you get uh, your training camp, uh, your strategy, uh, your trainer. Uh, my trainer, Eddie Gonzalez, he sets uh, the plan up, and I execute whatever we practice. Uh, you know, you, you got to train hard. That's for sure. You always yeah. got to train hard. You always got to get ready for the best. You know, the only thing that changes is the strategy. Like you say, fighting a taller guy, you know, you got to be in there. You can't give him the, his distance. Yeah. You got you to gotta bring the fight to him. You got to be on top of him. And uh, do your fight and don't let him do his fight. Yeah. And I guess that, yeah, the same could be said of, of 
most of opponents, I assume. You guys game plan around all that. So, Eddie, do you watch like video and stuff like that? Sorry. Do you watch tape on all the fighters? Uh, yeah? Yeah. Eddie's sitting off to the side, just so you guys <laughs> know. I have to ask him every now and again. But, uh, I mean, that's what the trainer does. I mean, he, um, the good ones, the great ones, make sure to study their opponent. That way he knows exactly what, to, uh, what he's going in for, and um, that way they can execute a good game plan. They notice the weaknesses and, and strengths of the other fighter, and, and then they compare uh, what their fighter has and what we can do better against our opponent in order to uh, dim you know, diminish anything that they want to bring to the table. Now, in Danny's case, it's interesting because when you guys were here last time, we talked about it. And uh, so you don't watch boxing basically at all, right? No. So it's one of the – I actually offered to buy a pay-per-view for Danny. And I was like, hey, if I buy the, bi <laughs> if I buy the big pay-per-view, will you watch it? And, like, I don't even have to be at your house or anything. And he was like, no, I'm not interested. No. So, <laughs> <laughs> so do you watch boxing, Jesse? I do, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm at most of the fights. And if I'm not there, then I'm watching it on TV. Or commentating. Or, or commentating. commentating. I mean, I enjoy it. Not only do I – I'm a fan of it. I mean, I am a fighter myself, and I do it uh professionally but i'm also a fan i um i uh i i love the sport you know being inside of the ring and being out as a as just a, a fan you know um, i know a lot of these guys so i uh i uh, either root for, i root for most of them you know and sometimes it's hard to see two fighters that i know face each other yeah but, sure you know they're like when i'm you know i'm gonna call, recall one situation when francisco vargas fought Burchett. Okay. I prefer not even to see that fight because I already knew how it was going to play out. Not so much who, who was going to be victorious, but how much of a brawl and a war it was going to be. I didn't even want to see it. And, um, yeah, I didn't until um, I, I realized what had happened after, you know, who won the fight. I saw some pictures and exactly how I expected it. I mean, the guys beat each other down, and, uh, and they're actually having a rematch on um, very soon, the Vargas Bear Chat too. Yeah, May 11th in Tucson. Yeah. yeah, and then we have Daniel Jacobs against uh, Canelo Alvarez, which everyone knows about. That's going to be a good fight. Yeah, May 5th, so that's a, that's a big the fight. Zone. Yeah. On the yeah, zone. On the zone. Yeah. You also have <laughs> one, sure of your, uh, <laughs> yeah. one of your stable mates from uh, Wild Car West is going to be fighting pretty soon. We talked about this a little bit. Christopher Diaz is going to be going up against Shakur Stevenson, man. So, yeah. you know, I kind of I, I feel that this is Shakur's toughest fight to date, and it's not a guaranteed victory for for uh, Stevenson in any way, shape, or form. No fight ever is, but Diaz Diaz has the goods. Diaz is a good fighter. Uh, he has uh, man, his strength is on another level for his weight division. The guy hits hard, so yeah, I agree. Uh, Shakur Stevenson has his hands full with with Chris Pitufo Diaz, and I believe it's going to be a great matchup. We'll see who comes out with the victory. Um, Pitufo, I've seen him in training camp, and he's he's looking tremendous. And uh, Shakur is a very talented athlete as well. You know, I think that it's going to be a very exciting fight. Uh, a week before that, we have Surto Ramirez also fighting, who is a close friend of mine. You know, he's, he's uh, moving up to the 175-pound division. I'm looking forward to his debut and uh, to him pursuing another world championship. Yeah, did you see? It was actually really interesting. I read a number of articles where, obviously, I think Billy Joe Saunders is now fighting for the vacated title from at 168 pounds, the title that was vacated by Zerto. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Zerto claims that he actually had a, a buy on that, that essentially that he, he was not vacating the title. He was going to 175, but planned on keeping the title. And so now there's a bunch of uh, uh, mix. Of this is, we were actually talking about how difficult it is to follow these championships before in some cases with the, the entities. But that would be very unfortunate. Can you imagine losing your title uh, on a technicality, I guess? <laughs> like, uh, yeah. I guess. The thing is that once you move up divisions, you know, it, it's hard to keep the other belt there because i mean you're not giving any you know when that when someone else could be fighting for that belt i mean keep in mind each, true. And, each and every belt that we have we have to pay a sanction if you for right yeah right roman yes <laughs> <laughs> we definitely know that you know it comes out of our purse out of our paycheck um a purse is what we call the paycheck right after the fight and um you know you see the percentage right there removed from your paycheck which we don't always like but you know it comes with the territory of course we become world champions you pay the sanction fees and and um we proudly do because i mean not too many people can call themselves world champions and we uh make sure to perform well and if we are victorious we expect the belt exactly and, um sanction fees come with it but it's okay uh and i think that has something to do with it that makes sense so but uh soon hopefully soon he'll become world champion at the 175 pound division and we'll yeah. go from there yeah, we got a lot going on at 175, uh, welterweight, a lot going on at heavyweight, actually. Some yes. more heavyweight news. So I, 
I just this that. month, I believe, it's yeah. going to be extremely busy. I mean, we also have Jaime Monquia fighting Munguia. in two weeks. I'm sorry, this weekend, actually. This, this weekend, Saturday this night. weekend. Because yeah. uh, the Loma fight is a Friday night. Yeah. It's a Friday night card, the Loma fight. And uh, that's the card that Zurdo's on. And then uh, Saturday on the zone, so everybody subscribe. Subscribe. All right, we have several fights coming up. And in three weeks, we have Daniel Roman, myself, Soto. Uh, hey, that's a great car. I, so I've Ruby got the car. Hey, so did Soto call you out in TJ, man? Is he that did. what happened? Yeah, he yeah. called you yeah, out, right? He called me out. I <laughs> thought he did, man. So, man, Soto, I hope you know what you're asking for. You <laughs> be careful Be careful what you wish for, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> Zorita's a, a good fighter, man. He, he yeah, has yeah. 100% of, you know, he, he's been there, man. He, he's a veteran. He's a savvy yeah. veteran. He's, he's been had seventy something fights. He's been I mean, in with the best, man. I mean, he he's fought a lot of fighters, but to to go to a war with with Brandon Rios and then call out Jesse Vargas as soon as you're done, man, it, it's pretty damn ballsy, there, man. <laughs> on like a sixty day turnaround. Yeah, like he's yeah. he's on a quick turnaround with that. So, hey. well, I mean, he the guy has heart, has a big heart, and um, you know, he, he wants to be in the biggest fights possible, and that might be why. But this might be a step too big, but. Like I said, I'm preparing for the best Soto that can possibly be in front of me come April 26th. And at the end of the day, we're here to give the fans a great fight. And he always comes to perform and uh, give the fans excitement. So I'm sure the fans are going to get their money's worth. Yeah, I'm sure to buy a ticket. Yeah, because no matter what, Soto's still a, a former world champion, man. He, he's two been division. a, a two-division world champion. Definitely. So he's, he's, he's been in there. Like I said, he's been in there. So He's extensively know, experienced. You, yeah. Like, you, you, can never look, you can never look past these guys, man. You, you just don't know what's going to happen inside of, inside of that ring. They put yeah. their lives on the line every time they step into the ring. And uh, they, they got to stay focused, man. They got to yeah. stay focused and, and be ready 100% because it's when it's a mental game, you know, more than just being physical, it, it's mental because, yeah, they're doing the training and they're doing the road work and they're getting ready. But especially for fights like this, when they got people, oh, you're in LA, can I get tickets? Oh, can I go watch you train? Oh, can I go run Mount Baldy with you? Oh, can I walk you into the, the ring? I don't, think, I don't think I don't think anybody volunteers so far to go run at Mount Baldy. <laughs> I was gonna say if people ask you to go run at Mount yeah, Baldy. So you know, there's there's a lot of extra mm-hmm. mental a lot of extra mental pressure going on there too. So, you know, it's uh like I said with Jesse, I think he'll be hundred percent focused and ready for uh for for Soto man and then uh you know, with bigger things coming at the end of the year. God willing, <laughs> but is it, we have a packed month. A yeah. packed month, a packed month of boxing. You with Crawford Con, Crawford yeah. and Con on pay per view, mm, ESPN pay per view. Was it next Saturday? You got Clarissa Shields and Christina Hammer going at it. Correct. Uh, yeah. Kid Chocolate against uh, against Truel. Yeah, Caleb. Caleb yeah. Truel. So yep. you got that fight. You know, I mean, it's just one weekend after another where there's two or three fights going on at the same time. You know, and then you have. The day after that, they the day after they fight, you have the uh, WBSS with the uh, Tete and Donaire going at it, and then you have Regis going up, you know, fighting too. So it's a it's a packed month, you know, going into May, going into the biggest boxing month, you know, one of the busy, busiest boxing months. Yeah, I feel like when we when we started the show, you really only had to worry about watching boxing on Saturday to prepare for the show on Sunday. And now uh, you have to watch boxing basically from Thursday onward. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's Thursday, right. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And sometimes while I'm doing the show, there's like fights on, on Sunday. On Sundays. Yeah. yeah because PBC, dead, PBC's been having difficult. Sunday cards. <laughs> what was it uh, a couple months back when we were in here? And then as soon as the show was over, we started watching the uh, Jose Ramirez. Jose Ramirez. Sean yeah. Cepeda fight. Yeah. We were watching it right yeah. after the show. Yeah. Exactly. Sunday. Sunday. Card Lu- right Luis Colazo was fighting while we were on the on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Very difficult. Boxing is alive and well, my friend. Exactly. Okay? exactly. And uh, we have three fights this month just on the zone. So make sure to subscribe. And of course, we have the Canelo Jacobs fight May 4th. Like I said, April 26th, you're going to have us. And um, also, you have May. When, when do we have? May 11th, we have the Vargas Berchet, right? Yeah, May 11th. May 11th. And uh, there's two rematches it's the Vargas Berchet rematch, and then you have the Dog Bay rematch against uh, Navarrete mm-hmm. that same night with. You know, uh, which is some interest to you guys. <laughs> exactly. I mean. yes. Eddie will watch it at least. I don't think Danny, Danny's not going to, but Eddie's going to watch it for sure. But uh, a couple of things real quick. Randy Thiessen uh, said, so cool to fight in your hometown. So that's a shout out for Danny right there. Uh, main event, Mark, thanks for jumping on. He said, it's awesome. Hit, hit the like button. I agree. Definitely. Go ahead and like it. Chase Athletics uh, wants to know, Danny, how old were you when you started boxing? 
I'll say like around six or seven. Jeez, that's yeah. that's a long time. It's when they took the <laughs> so, they took the soccer ball away from me, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, I was playing soccer. Uh, mm-hmm. Kid had the ball. He took he took away the ball. You know, my ball, my rules. So I got the ball, threw it over the fence, and guy ended up getting beat up because of that. And that's how it start. It all started, man. That's how it <laughs> all started. No, no more soccer. You're gonna catch these hands now. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "No one else will be beating me up anytime soon yeah, anymore." Yeah. Uh-huh. He said, "Eddie, come show me how to fight, Eddie." <laughs> how old were you, Jesse? I was eight years old. You were eight? Yeah, eight years old. So just around the time that Roman was started boxing himself. Exactly. And thanks to that, we're in this position now. And, you know, we started dreaming as kids, and now we're uh, look, looking forward to accomplishing other goals that we have in mind. So, Jesse, there's another question for you, actually, also from Chase Athletics. Uh, he says, a big fan, constant professional. What business advice would you give to young fighters? Business advice that I would give to young fighters, uh, invest your money properly, uh, save your money yeah. uh, properly, um, take your time, be patient when it comes to to making the money and also, well, not so much making the money, try and make it as fast as possible, of course, but when it comes to spending it, save it. I mean, that's I repeated it twice because that's very important. I mean, always make sure that you have a window where if, if there's a gap that you are not training or not fighting, you have money to spend. You know, and that's very important. And once you are saving a, you know, a decent amount of money, then I'd say invest it in something that you you see that is that is smart. Don't ever trust anyone else with your money. Make sure that you um, make your own decisions. That way, you don't ever um, you don't ever regret any uh, the decisions that you have made. You know, because you learn from each and every business decision that you have made. Um, other than that, um, I'd say. Uh, Make the right business decision. Make the right moves. Think it over. Think it once. Think it twice. Three times. I mean, y- this is your company. You are your your own company. So you have to make sure that you take care of it. You have to make sure that you uh, invest in the proper meals. That way, your body is functioning properly. You're you're, you're you have a vehicle, and it is not a 1991 um, Honda. Right? You have a Ferrari. Take care of it because that's going to be your mon- money maker. You know, one thing I see, man, and I would suggest if you're just starting up, surround yourself with a good team and, and, and study. You know, you and, your, you and your parents study. You know, make sure you have a good team around you and, and don't get caught by, by some of these wolves, man, some of these, these managers, because you, you, you see it a lot. <laughs> You know, he points. He points at Eddie. No, no man, no, Eddie, no. Eddie. Eddie's <laughs> a good. Not because Eddie's a wolf. We were we were just talking about that. Yeah. Actually, you no. you you have to you have to surround yourself with a, a a good team. You know, there was um like a little meme I seen on Facebook yesterday, and it was a bowl of oranges, right? Hmm. And the bowl of oranges has two pieces of mold on it, and the other pieces start growing mold. Why? Because they're in that bowl with with a couple of bad pieces of fruit, and everything else turns bad. Right. Mm-hmm. You get yourself a bunch of good people around you. You're going to stay good, man. I mean, you don't want to fall into that trap where you're paying, you know, 25 percent, 35 percent, whatever, whatever the percentages are. But you're not making any money when, you know, you, mm-hmm. you come home from making two or three thousand dollars for, for a fight at a club show and, and you bring home four hundred bucks. You know, I mean, there's make sure that you have the right people around you. You don't want new friends. You don't want people telling you how to invest your money or whatnot. Like Jesse said, learn for yourself. Be your own business person. Surround yourself with good people that know the business and people that you can trust. I think that's the, the, the main thing is make sure that they're people that you can trust and people that you know. Yes, I, I agree with you. And I, tr- I try to surround myself with people that help me. I mean, Eddie helps me a lot. He, like, he gives me advice. He advises me in everything. Danny. I mean, I try to take care of my money, you know. That's, that's, that's the important thing because, you know, you never know with boxing. It might be the last fight, or you, you might not. It's come dangerous, out. right? Yes, I, I seen some kid man on on Instagram, a, a, a fighter, and uh, he had fought a fight, you know. And I'm not I'm not gonna say no names, but then two days later, he's he's wearing like a twenty five or twenty six hundred dollar pair of tennis shoes. When I know damn well he didn't make that much money on the fight, you know, I don't know what he made in from sponsorships or whatnot. But he's not a big enough fighter, to me. I mean. When you're 18 or 19 years old and you're spending 28 or 2900 dollars on a pair of some some tennis shoes, I think there's it gets a gets bigger better. every time. He's there's like, a, when it's three thousand, four thousand dollars on some tennis shoes. There's a better way. <laughs> there's just a better way to go about it, man. That's all I'm saying. I mean, you know, whatever the damn cost of those shoes were, I think there's a smarter way to invest your money than 
Stop yeah, hating, if, man. If Just stop hating on the kid. No, I'm not. I'm not hating, bro. No, no, he's I, know, not, I know. I know. I know. No, I'm not, I, I'm I mean that's totally dollars. understandable. That's totally understandable. I I agree 100. percent I mean, uh, waste your money intelligently and yeah. uh, look forward to the future. That way, you continue to build an empire. Yeah. yeah. And also take care of your temple, right? That's like the one of the other things oh. that you were talking about, right? And I think that's that's one of the key things. You have to you have to really take care of your body. I think to today, you know, the modern athletes and the standouts are people who are sort of constantly, not necessarily in training, not not in Just training camp, but they're right? very disciplined in terms of you know diet and training. Basic training, yeah. So they're in the gym even if they're not like in a training camp that's mode. What I was telling Danny right now when I yeah. walked in, man, I'm like, what are you weighing, Danny? 130 already? You know, you he looks like he's ready to go for the fight tomorrow. You know. <laughs> If you're a pro fighter, you should be walking around, to me, no more than 12, 15 pounds heavier than what your what your weight is. You know, I mean, Danny's stay in shape. You know, don't. Yeah. Too many too shape. many people blow up, man. I mean, mm -hmm. the day they weigh in and then the next day they're 22, 24 pounds heavier than, you know, you see them a week later at the Laker game eating nachos, drinking a big old 44 ounce soda. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I guess to it's each about, It's about staying disciplined, right? Yeah. Staying disciplined and also um, knowing what everyone is around for, knowing how who's going to benefit you in what way when it goes to uh, taking care of yourself and, and your business, knowing um, who can continue to help you progress, who can take you to another level. Surround yourself with good people. Same thing that Roman just said. Yeah. You know, we, we can't stress it enough. George Mitchell jumped on. Shout out to George Mitchell. George wants to know, what do you guys think is the oldest you can start and have a good professional career? So how old can I start and actually have a – this is kind of – there's a lot of subjectivity uh, here, George. Like what, it depends on what you consider a good professional career. Um, like, for instance, if you can provide for your family, I would say that's a good professional career. But um, if you're talking about world championships, then you probably need to have a little bit more experience under your belt. But – I'll still pose the question to you. What's what's the oldest that you guys can reasonably start? I mean, I you guys have been boxing since you were children. <laughs> I mean, like it, <laughs> it depends on the on the person. You know, if you're the party type, you, even if you're young, you might not last that much. So it depends on how you take care of yourself and, like, how you perform, too, because you got to listen to your body. I yeah. Mean, you get to a certain age, I believe, and your body ain't responding like how it was a couple years back. I think to that point, like like Sergio Martinez got what's considered a late start in boxing, but he was also already a world class athlete. Like he was like a cyclist and was constantly in shape, was already doing all these things. So to Danny's point, like you may or sometimes particularly at heavyweight, you get uh, converts from football. You see a lot of dudes who played like college football and stuff like that who will convert and become boxing and experience some levels of success. Um, not necessarily at the highest levels, but, you know, I would what I would say are successful careers. But again, they're also already world class athletes starting in their 20s. So they're, it's not like they started in, from to your yeah, point, I mean, like a name partying. that comes to me is Bernard Hopkins. Yeah. You know, he started in his 20s. And um, I mean, sky's the limit. It's just a matter of how much do you want it? You know, of course, make sure that your body will still react to uh, to these elite training sessions and will be able to endure these long training sessions and if it can it's the guy's the limit i mean go for it yeah give it a try and then uh, you'll see how you feel and if if you really l want it that bad then you'll keep it going boxing is an interesting thing is that you all you really have to do to become a professional boxer and i don't say all you have to do like you guys do all kinds of training and and to to be at the level that you're at but in terms of like being licensed as a professional it's a test uh and it's really more a fitness test than necessarily like uh you know seeing can you go 12 rounds with the champ kind of thing so you don't you don't necessarily like you can give yourself a shot in boxing you just have to get in shape and pass the test mm. get in yeah. shape i don't know man i've seen some <laughs> of these guys man it's like how do they get licensed you know i mean uh yeah was well, it uh at the stub hub i want to say uh, deontay wilder's brother yeah, what about him? Yeah, he fought some guy that looked like me, man, shaped like me and everything. I'm like, Jesus Christ. I, yeah, I, I mean. This guy getting licensed. But those are the fights that, that don't make it to TV. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true, too. <laughs> <laughs> so the fans don't know. I guess you're getting an insight from uh, my man here. You yeah. know, that's uh, some of the tips that you're giving, right? I mean, I just the first two fights of the night sometimes you know, may occur <laughs> sometimes in that <laughs> way. 
Yeah. Well, that's a uh, Tommy Fury, right? Tommy Fury fought the. Uh, he, the, his last fight was against the guy that was 0 and 24. His fight before that was, was the guy who had like 200 many? professional fights. 200 some, yeah. yeah. But there were like, you know, over 100, 100 something. 100, 130, 130 losses. losses yeah, or like something. 130 losses out of 200 professional fights or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, that's bad. I never liked yeah. facing fighters <laughs> with a lot of defeats. It just looked bad on my record. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, that's that's when I was young, I mean, I didn't. I no, didn't, you uh, started fighting. I mean, even when you were young, I mean, looking back, I mean, you were fighting top notch guys. You were fighting yeah. Vivian Harris and guys like that yeah. back when. Undefeated prospects yeah. as well that I was taking out early on. I mean, my first undefeated guy that I faced, I was 4 0 and he was 5 0. And he had, uh, you know, high hopes of becoming a champion. A lot of people believed in him. Yeah. And he took the fight just because uh, he was hoping to sign with a major promotional company. And um, that's the reason why he challenged me. And I said, Really? He wants to challenge me? Okay, let's take the fight. And I. <laughs> put it on him and I basically retired him um but I, I mean I've had a long history so for you Jess it's a little bit different because your only two losses came from top-notch world-class fighters man they came from Timothy Bradley and Manny Pacquiao and Timothy Bradley there was a lot of uh yeah speculation <laughs> controversial <laughs> yeah we yeah, yeah here's the bell but taste. no it's, yeah but for but for you, Danny, it's a little bit different because you suffered a few losses early in your career, man. Yes. And then you haven't lost since 2013. You know, what What was the changing point in your career after suffering those losses? You know, what what, what happened? What, what triggered in you to? I mean, uh, or, or what was it? Was it because I know you lost to a Japanese kid. Yes. The first one it was uh, against Takashi Okada. Yeah. Second one, it was uh, to Juan Reyes. So they, they were pretty pretty close fights, but because Reyes was undefeated, right? Wasn't he nine and zero when he took him on? Yes. Yeah. So. So the, the first ones, you know, like brawling, brawling. So with the losses, I learned, you know, you can't brawl all the time. Uh, you learn stuff like that, you know. You, you even, I mean, you learn everything from uh, every fight, but like you learn a little bit more because <laughs> you lost. Yeah. You open your eyes a little bit more. You know what? I, I gotta make a change. I gotta change. I can't keep this because same thing's gonna happen on the next fight. So after that, those losses, you know, helped me. I, I'm, I'm thankful, you know. Thank God that it happened, cause uh, if I think if it wouldn't be for uh, those two losses, I don't, I don't think I would have been really focused. How I am now, or maybe, maybe even uh, made be at this point made you a better fighter. Yes. Yeah, and that just proves it. You know, we continue to progress. Yeah, we because you get better. Too many yes. people are right now. They're they're concerned with the the O. You know, besides the promotional companies and, and crossing promotional boundaries, there's too many fighters right now that are just they're they're too concerned about taking that first loss and what it's going to do to them and their sponsors and their money and whatnot. And they I don't want to take t- tough challenges. No, they don't. I mean, man. like you heard it from Roman. I mean, he yeah. faced an undefeated fighter, you know, uh, I'm sure a couple in his in his in his day. But it's just the, the challenge, the risk that we're willing to take to to uh, continue to progress, to continue to give the fans action-packed fights. You know what I mean? As he said, they were close fights. They were good fights. The yeah. fans got their money's worth. But that's what it's about. I mean, that's the only way that you're going to continue to imp- improve and become a superstar is taking off these tough ta- challenges. Nice. You seem, uh, you're a pretty articulate dude. So what? I'm, I'm curious, what is more nervous making for you, these fights or doing the commentary stuff? I've I've got comfortable with both. Okay. Uh, in preparation, though, uh, to being a commentator, that is a little nerve wracking because you want to make sure that you have all the facts down. You want to okay. make a mistake. You know, uh, sometimes I think I made a mistake once, but I corrected it instantly. Um, I think I said the incorrect number of knockouts that one of the fighters had won uh, by in the first round. So in the first round, I think he had won three f- three fights. Yeah, he had won three fights by knockout in the first round. And I think I had uh, mentioned it, and it was actually four knockouts. So I said three. Oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. It was four knockouts. So things like that, you know, little okay. facts that you want to give the people and um, listeners that are tuning in. You don't want to never want to give them the wrong information. Yeah, so that's what gives me a little ner- nervous. How yeah. the hell do you do with all these Eastern Europeans and these <laughs> last names, man? You yeah. repeat it over yeah. and, over and over, over and over again. Yeah. You ask them. Just practice, yeah. man. Just yeah, you just practice it. I mean, um, and then if you got to ask Siri, you'll ask Siri. <laughs> See, in you both know, cases. This is with the phones, but every now and then. <laughs> in both the How fight. How you say Bosnik? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> in both the fight and on the mic, it's just about the preparation. You know, yeah. Stax gets everybody's name wrong. All That's why he asks. He yeah. Can't, yeah, I don't think he can say any Russian fighter's name right. No, yeah. none. <laughs> 
You no. said it right. I mean, we have to prepare for each and every subject that we're uh, pursuing. <laughs> exactly. It's all about preparation. Oh, man. In in terms of your box tricks, I had asked you guys beforehand. You guys were just talking about your, your past and fighting. And uh, you had mentioned uh, uh, fighting a guy who was undefeated. And, Danny, you talked about some fights early in your career. So I'd ask you guys, do you know who your first fight was? So on box rec, do you know the name of the first fighter in a professional contest? So I, w- I want to test you out here. So Jesse, who was who was the first fighter that you faced in a professional contest? I believe his contest? name was Joel Gonzalez. Joel Gonzalez. Let's see. Pretty sure. Joel Gonzalez. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, good. Look at that. And September, he was undefeated. Two, September 2008. He and was one and zero. He was undefeated. <laughs> 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 Pretty good. Danny, Eddie. Do you guys know who the first fighter you? Just, <laughs> uh, you can say the first uh, first name Cri- Christian. Let's see, first name Christian. Let's check it out. Chris, Chris, Christian. Yeah, Christian yeah. Chris. Right, Chris. He got it. Yeah, yeah. 2010, that. October 2010. Yeah, oh, you Double guys are on top of it. <laughs> yeah, you guys are on top of it. I mean, that was a decent record that he had too for the first fight, three and one. Three and one, yeah. yeah. His pro debut. Yeah, in Ontario. Yeah, Ontario, California. It's interesting. Work your way up through the Thompson promotions, man. Yes. You guys have good memories, dude. Yeah. <laughs> mo- most of our fights, uh, they were done at uh, Thompson. Yeah. Ontario, Corona. So, yeah. All they, the early fights before you took your act on the road. Yes. Uh, before <laughs> um, I started uh, going on the road with uh, Adam Lopez. Yeah. That was the first. Atlantic, Atlantic City. Atlantic City, yes. Got Rangers. no respect from the, uh, the East Coast biased announcers. <laughs> None whatsoever. <laughs> Everybody had Danny losing except me. I said Danny's gonna stop him. They they were on Adam Lopez's high horse, man. At the time, Adam Lopez was undefeated, and I to those announcers, he was just the the next best thing since sliced bread, man. And uh, Danny went in there and put an ass whooping on him. <laughs> <laughs> Took over. What's yeah. up, iconic? Iconic jumped on. They said, "What's up? Beautiful day in L.A. Time to yeah, I agree. It's very nice <laughs> out today." Actually. So we got to hear what bad. they what they say in the interview with uh, Roman. Oh, who? Oh, <laughs> in that fight that we were just talking about. Oh, the fight we were just talking oh, about. Yeah, man. Hey, I, think you, to... I think you got to hear the commentators, bro. Yeah, you got yeah, to go gotta back hear. and watch. <laughs> go back and watch the fight with them and those Showtime commentators, commentators or something else, man. It's just like, hey, it is what it is. But yeah, yeah I was uh, I was pretty stoked when he when he got that W, man. It's got to be difficult as well, though, because there's inherently there's some natural bias that's going on you know as you're sitting at ringside you can you know you're supposed to act as though you don't have a preference or you don't have a favorite but the truth is everybody's got a preference we've all got favorites there's the guy that we like to watch there's you know the guy that we want to win and stuff like that so sometimes it has to be challenging to be in that position sitting at the table you know what i mean and you know what is tough when you have the commentators on one side of the ring only and uh, they yeah, don't they don't acknowledge what's going on from the other side. If the other opponent just landed a three four punch combination, guess what? They don't talk about it. They just talk about how uh, the other fighter had a good training camp according to his trainer, you know. And you don't hear that, you know. You don't hear what they had to say because they're it's just one sided. They're on one side of the ring, and I'm hoping that he comes out with the victory. You know that's why I just pay a lot of attention to the commentators that are, uh, you know, uh, that are in front of the ring, you know, and and trying to narrate what's going on you know, basically the narrators of the show and if they're not go- doing a good job just turn the volume down and then you be your own judge yeah exactly you know i mean exactly. that's something to pay attention to i mean me personally i like to just be truly honest because i am a fighter i know how it feels to to be in the ring to be in the position where they're not giving you the credit that you should deserve but they're giving the other guy all the credit so i'm just you know I'm, i stay mutual and i stay in the middle and i just uh call it like i see it Whoever is landing the most punches and the most clean effect the punches, I'll let them know and why. And that's what a good commentator should do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it, ha- it happened not just that Showtime fight, but the fight afterwards was fought on a PBC card. And uh, you took on, a, was it Moses Flores? Yes, Texas. And it was uh, one of PBC's fighters. And again, Daniel was coming in as their underdog, you know. <laughs> and uh, yes. F- Flores was just going to take it to him and you put i remember you put that body work on floors the whole fight i mean Mm -hmm. that that was a different that was a different daniel i had seen daniel fight and i knew what you were going to do to lopez but when when you took it to floors the way you did and it seems like for every fighter it's eddie's has your game plan perfect for you yes you know depending if it's sean kubo who's six foot two (laughs) you know (laughs) or 
you know Moses Flores or, or whatnot, it, it seems like your game plan is always it, it's set in stone and it is working out for you guys, man. And yes, thank got you. A, you got a good team behind you, man. You, you're accomplishing a lot, and uh, it's working out for you, man. Whatever you guys are doing, you're doing it right. So just keep up the good work, man. Thank you. And Jesse, man, I know you'll be back in the ring soon, coming off two draws, but mm-hmm. controversial draws. I th- I think you beat Broner. I mean, it is what it is, but there and then kind of got caught slipping in, in your last fight. You had the fight. I had it in the bag, and had I it. wanted to finish it. You know, I wanted to finish with the bang. And was, uh, was that a flash knockdown? It looked like a flash knockdown. It was a knockdown. flash knockdown. Uh, if you call it that, I honestly just uh, did he felt hurt that you? I wasn't. No. no then, yeah, then not. it was a flash. No, 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 no. No, he did not. I honestly just felt that I um, was leaning in too much, and when I saw the punch, I just put myself in a bad position when it came to balance. But uh, the fans will call it however they feel it will be, and, um, you know, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. But um, I'm here to go in come April 26. Did you feel like it, in the Adrian Broner fight in particular, it was kind of like a uh, the only way to get to a draw is to kind of split it half and half? Is my it, 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 that's probably sounded weird. People are like, yeah, that's how you get to a draw. But I actually mean the first half of the fight and the second half of the fight. So mm-hmm. the first half of the fight where um, you were much more in control and things like that, and then it got a little bit more competitive in the second half, and people can kind of come on and say, okay, well. It, Ended okay. Up as the result okay. You of just said it right now. So I was in control the first half, right? So that's automatic. Definitely. You yeah, put yeah. that in the bag, right? Exa- exactly. In the bag. In the bag. Yeah. Now give me at least one round. You the, said competitive yeah, in the is, second half, is, right? Yeah. So I I say from one to seven I controlled, uh, completely, and then yeah. from eight to twelve it became you know some rounds for him, some rounds for me. Yeah. So automatically the first half is mine. You just agreed. Second half, as long as you give me one or two rounds, that's it. That's yeah, that makes it a no, win. no, I don't. But I, don't. I was in New York in his hometown, his yeah, in, in his backyard. So I, it's understandable. Um, you know what? I'm here now. I'm in a good position. I'm with uh, connected with the zone. I'm connected with Matchroom Box and Eddie Hearn, and I'm very thankful to be in this position. He's a he's a good businessman. He's he's a straightforward type of guy. Whatever he tells you, he's gonna do. He does it. And I I, I only have um, respect for a person like that. that sure comes and negotiates with you like that yeah and i think and i don't disagree with what you're saying what i'm saying uh more is that the way that you can end up with a draw is if yeah. you're if you're on looking and you're scoring you're saying okay well i gave jesse the first six well now i have to give adrian the the last six that's the only way you can end up at a draw yeah. right yeah um do you feel like the second half of that fight was more competitive than the first number one and secondly do you know what caused that or do you know what changed in the dynamic of the fight that caused the second half to be closer than the first half where you were in control i got bored (laughs) you know after the seventh (laughs) round i said all right let's make it a fight i have this in the bag yeah yeah, you know what i I mean that's how i felt and um because i heard some of the fans booing sometimes you know because Mm -hmm. they were uh they were uh, Broner uh, fans, and it's all right. Let's give them a show. Dude, didn't you, know? you watch Tito Trinidad and De La Hoya, <laughs> man? Come on, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. It was, um, I wanted to, get, you know, I've always been a fan-friendly fighter. So the minute that I, uh, they saw, the fans saw it as a one-sided fight. I mean, I knew I had the fight in the bag after yeah. seven rounds. All right, let's make it a fight. And I stood there. I fought with them because I want to do a, a little bit of both. I didn't see it as wrong. Now, I'm not happy with that decision because I, I would have got the, the nod with the victory. Sure. Well, it's kind of a double-edged sword, though, because you could say you get the nod with the victory, but then people will say, well, it was boring, and you know what I mean? Like, like you're saying, like, yeah, yeah, it, it was just one-sided, one-sided. it's boring. Runner doesn't have anything. Boxing fans are fickle, man. They yeah, like yeah, it's, <laughs> it's tough, man. I think that just fans in general, when it comes to the sport, yeah, you know, sure. you have to keep them um, happy, but also uh, make sure that you're um, in control of uh, the pace. I, I, I have that, that sometimes I let the f- fans get to me, and I say, all right, let's give them a fight, even though... Uh, I mean, the last fight, I had to fight in the bag also. Yeah. Yes. I mean, <laughs> keep in mind that in Chicago, where the fight took place, yeah. Daniel Roman and I fought mm-hmm. the same night. Yeah. Um, they show us the scorecards after every three rounds. So I knew open I was scoring. winning. Yeah, it was open yeah. scoring. I knew I was winning. But uh, I said, you know what? Let's, let's finish it up. You know, this is a war. Let's, let's, let's uh, finish it. And I probably shouldn't have uh, just gone out there and just brawled it out in the last round if I had to fight in the bag. But if you didn't have the warrior spirit... You probably wouldn't be where you were there today you go. either, yeah, right? There you like go. you gotta, you gotta have. That's true. You yeah. know, <laughs> it's a, no, like you said, it, it is a double-edged sword because I think it is the 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 casual fans, right? They want the all action. They want the Chavez. They want the Mexican style, the triple G. They want go in there and beat the shit out of each other. And where, we want to give it to them. And and, and that's what they want to do, right? And, mm-hmm. and but then you have other fans that hey. We appreciate, you know, the, the, the people that watch boxing all the time. Sometimes we appreciate more 
the technical fighters, the Rigondells, the Lomas, the type of fighters. This that is a good question for you too. So what do you prefer, the balls out type of fighter or the uh, technical, smart, experienced fighter that just uh, hits and doesn't get hit? Which one would you choose? You know what, man? I, I like the the in between fighters the way you and Danny are, man. You All guys right. are you guys are boxer punchers, and, and that's the type of fighter I like. If you guys got to go in for the kill, you guys will. Yeah. But you guys, it to me. Okay, like for instance, Nico Macias, okay? He only knows one gear. It's straight ahead, box, 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 and that's it. There's no type of defense whatsoever. Don't get me wrong. Is it entertaining? If I'm going to sit back and have a beer and watch these guys beat the shit out of each other, okay, it is what it is. But I'd rather watch somebody like Danny or somebody like you pick somebody apart, and then when you have them, you're just like a lion, and you jump on them, and, and that's it. Then, then it's over. You know what I mean? There, there's more to it than just standing there and, and getting beat the hell up like, uh, you know, Bandido. I love Vargas, bro. But his style, man, I mean, he, he's not going to last. You know, he, he's going to cut. Like you said, they, they got the rematch coming up. And unless he's completely healed from this plastic surgery that he's had, he's, he's going to cut again. And it's going to be a, blu- a brutal, bloody war again. And, and that doesn't mean that I don't like it. I mean, it is what it is. It's just... When you get to know the fighters, when I get to know people like you and people like Danny, you know, you you want to hope that, like you said, you, you see him, you know him, you want to hope that the career is going to go a little bit different. But when they only know one style, uh, it's entertaining, but that's that's not my type of fight. So let me, uh, I'm going to take a, a less, po- I think that was a political answer. <laughs> that's how I feel. I'm, I'm going to take a less. I think when you talk about memorable fights, what fights do you remember? They all have the same characteristics. We're talking about... You know, from the Thrilla in Manila up to Warcom. Mike Alvarado and, and you know, Rios. Brandon Rios, uh, all the way back to, like, like I can Sugar name Ray Leonard, uh, yeah, Sugar Marvin, Ray Leonard and Marvin, Marvin. You can name all of them. And they're all dust-ups. They're all straight-up dust-ups. And it's the thing that people, um, in terms of memorable fights, it's the thing that people remember compared to a fight like, let's say, Floyd Mayweather versus Canelo Alvarez, where it's one fighter who's just significantly more skilled and experienced than the other one. Uh, it's a one-sided affair to everyone except for one of the judges who was sitting at that, at that table, but everybody else who watched it. The memorable fights come from the mix-ups. They come, they yeah. come from the competitive fights. In fact, it doesn't even take great fighters to make great fights. It takes two guys of sort of comparable skills who are in there really throwing exchanges and things like this. And f- if you have one great fighter and one who's not so great, there's this big discrepancy, and, it, and the tag that people apply to it is boring. So what happens is fans will watch a Floyd Mayweather fight and they'll say, Floyd Mayweather's boring, right? And why is that? It's because he doesn't get hit a whole lot. And there's not a lot of mix-ups. There's not a lot of things like that. So I think the truth is, generally speaking, people prefer the dust-ups. But the guys who are the Floyd Mayweathers of the world or the Vasily Lomachenkos who aren't getting hit so much get more respect in the media and in the, in the boxing community. And what, what that means is, is when you look at the pound-for-pound pound list, it's, it's filled up with those guys. It's filled up with guys who have boxing technique and ability more so than it is with guys who are just straight-up scrappers. It, it, but here's, here's the thing about that, man, and, and, and this is what I'm saying. This is where I go back to Jess and I go back to Danny as far as going in for the kill. You could have somebody like uh, a Guillermo Rigondeau, for instance, right, where if he gets hit six times, he's only going to hit his opponent seven times just to win that round. Sure. And, and, and be boring when he knows damn well he has way more skills and we know that he has way more skills than a, that opponent and he should go in and finish the damn fight and he doesn't why i don't know i mean that would be something i'd have to ask him and his team because there's a risk in it there's there's risk in doing i that. mean well not when when he's that much more technically sound than the next fighter is, is there really that much more risk though is what i'm saying i mean when he can sit there and outbox him and then go in, and then be able to go in for a kill you know, take them apart, pick them apart, and then and then finish it. Why not do it? You know, I, that's that's the thing I don't understand with 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 some of these, like you said, like the Floyd Mayweather type fighters. You know, there there are certain fight fights that hey, he's, he's just going to do enough to win, just enough to get by to 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 get the W, and that's where I think it comes in as the fighter's boring. Yeah. Know? But I, I but think something we won't have born is April 26th. Everybody yeah, tune sure. in. April 26th. April 26th. April 26th. There's no, no boring fighter sitting at this table no, today. No, exactly. <laughs> no, April 26th. <laughs> yeah, make sure you guys get that DAZN app. Get the $99 one. If you guys aren't subscribers yet, 
that are already locked into that ten dollar a month get the ninety nine dollar one man it, it, you pay for the year and it it amounts to eight dollars and thirty three cents a month it's it's cheap man you're gonna get a canelo fight yeah it's which, the equivalent of one canelo pay-per-view one, one canelo just, pay-per-view man the yeah. canelo if canelo pay-per-view were on a uh, canelo jacobs were on a golden boy pay-per-view yeah. it'd be 89.95 plus tax the high definition be 100 bucks that pays for the zone for the year man and you're going to get a ton of cards and not just cards here in the united states you're going to get eastern european cards they just signed a deal with major league baseball i was watching the dodger game the other day on the zone i you pay know? tax on those pay-per-view yeah damn Whatever, whatever the the, the <laughs> tax the 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 cable company is going to tax you depending on who your cable or satellite provider is. I mean, it it's the way it's going, man. The zone, the streaming apps, it's the way of the future. I mean, if you want to watch the fights, that's the way to do it. This is a a can't miss card. It's stacked from top to bottom. They're all a, they're going to be all action fights. Yeah. Styles make fights. T J Dohaney and and Danny Roman are going to go at it. I have to withdraw my pay-per-view offer, Danny, because uh, I didn't realize it was that much. No, I'm just kidding. Tell me, though, if you're around the city, you can make it go. Because I I plan on stealing the night. (laughs) There you go. I plan plan on being the fight of the night. and So expect a great fight from my side. There you go. And Jesse's already (laughs) promised an all-action war. That's a challenge, Jesse. I think that's a challenge right there. That's another challenge. There you go. (laughs) We're on the same show the second time around. So... uh, Fight, fight of the night, man. Out, out of you guys, whoever, fight whoever gets fight of the night, I'm gonna take you guys to King Taco, bro. After oh, the, after yeah. the fight, bro. <laughs> hey, you win the trainer. I got you Eddie. guys, man. <laughs> <laughs> tacos. All right, you guys. Tacos, just, tacos just on me, bro. So. Yeah, yeah, and even if you don't Eddie. get fight of the night, you could come join us and have tacos with us, bro. <laughs> and also, um, if you can't find the zone, if you're subscribed to Supreme Boxing, man, you can go to our link in any of our bios, and the Zone app is in our bio. So you can go to the Supreme Boxing INC.com. You can go to our Supreme Boxing website. And we have the DAZN app in our bio. It's just one click away from you being able to watch some outstanding boxing. Like I said, you got Jesse coming up. You got Danny coming up, making his hometown debut here in Los Angeles. Yes. Unifying the titles. Going to sit there, go against TJ Dohaney and go into unification matchup. You know, so best of luck to you. You got Jesse Thank Vargas, you. who was actually born out here in Southern California, That's and then right. moved and then moved to Vegas. Exactly. So, you know, he he's always a entertaining fighter. So it should be a should be a, a good a, a good night of fights. Before we sign off, where should we follow you guys at? Where should we follow you, Jesse? Well, follow me on Jesse Vargas on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Jesse Vargas underscore. Once again, Jesse with an I E Vargas uh, underscore. And thank you for the support. I hope to see you up at 26. And, of course, Danny's. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Your social media. Yeah, where, where you do can follow me on uh, Instagram, underscore, babyface assassin, underscore. And uh, I can't say Facebook because I lost my password and uh, <laughs> never updated the email. So <laughs> <laughs> you check cool. me on um, Instagram. Though. I'll be there for sure. Stacks. You can find me at supremeboxing.com. Supreme Boxing on Twitter. Supreme Boxing on Instagram. Um, I do have a Facebook, but basically that's personal so i don't really accept but his wife doesn't requests. let him share his facebook so yeah don't follow him on his facebook you get him in trouble <laughs> yeah exactly man but no you can find me on supreme boxing and also you know you can also follow besides just the zone make sure you follow thompson boxing as well thompson boxing is a uh, promotional company that danny came up through they yes. are his co-promoters They're co-promoters Tom, co-promoters yeah. and they put on good shows once a month they got a couple of big shows coming up they got one on the 19th and one in may um, that they'll be announcing very soon. But make sure you follow Thompson Boxing as well. Make sure you get the DAZN app because we are going to have some good fights on our hands here in a couple of weeks at the alley at the Forum here in Inglewood. And if we're giving the, the promoters exposure, well, then fo- follow uh, Matchroom yeah. Boxing, okay? <laughs> make sure to follow match them. I know. Don't leave people out, man. What's yeah, expand on, expand on. For me, of course, you can follow me at Beat the Count on Instagram. Follow me at Beat the Count on Facebook. I want to s- extend my sincerest thank you to uh, Jesse Vargas and Danny Roman, two great champions who sat with us here today. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate all you for being on the live chat. Um, that's it. That's all I got. Thank you all for tuning in. Thanks. Thanks. Thank Peace. you. Thank you guys, man. We'll get some pictures real quick. All right. <laughs>